in this module we will learn about magnetism you are all familiar with magnets uh, such as bar magnets or fridge magnets you have probably grown up uh, playing with these magnets the earth itself itself is an example of a giant magnet a magnet irrespective of its size and shape has two poles which we call the north and south poles uh, like poles, the poles actually exert forces on each other. Like poles repel and unlike poles attract each other. So in a way, uh, this is analogous to positive and negative charges that you learned in electrostatics. Uh, like charges repel and unlike charges attract. Similarly, in magnetism, we have these north and south poles and uh, like poles repel each other and unlike poles attract. Why do we call this? north and south poles this is because magnets tend to po point towards earth's north and south poles uh, this can be found uh, uh, this can be seen by a simple experiment for example uh, if you suspend a bar magnet freely by a string the bar magnet will rotate but eventually it will come to rest and it's the north pole of the bar magnet will point towards earth's north direction the, the north pole that is the geographic north direction of the earth. So we know that uh, unlike poles attract each other and the earth itself is a huge magnet. So uh, the earth's magnetic south pole must be located in the north direction. That's why the bar magnet's north pole points in the geographic north direction of the earth where the, uh, where the actual south pole of the magnet of the earth's magnet is located. The force between two magnets depends on their uh, two magnetic poles depends on their distance of separation and uh, the force goes as inverse of the square of the distance and uh, magnetic poles comes in pairs so we always have a north and the south pole together magnetic monopoles which are single magnetic poles they have never been observed experimentally although there are some theories predicting that they can exist but no one has ever found them a, a single magnetic pole isolated in an isolated manner. So the bottom line is uh, in nature magnetic po poles come in pairs. So now let us talk about magnetic fields and you will encounter magnetic fields almost in all areas of physics. So it is important to understand what these are. So this is a field force so it doesn't require any physical contact. If you have a magnetic pole uh, there is a magnetic field that develops in its vicinity and if you if you bring another magnet to close to uh, in this magnetic field then that magnet uh, experiences a force the magnetic force so magnetic fields are vector quantities uh, they are represented by the symbol capital B you can find the direction of the magnetic field uh, by a compass uh, the needle of the compass pointing in the north direction also points in the direction of the magnetic field. So if you have a north pole and if you bring another north pole uh, towards its vicinity then the two poles will push away and the direction in which uh, the force acts gives you the direction of the magnetic field also. So we frequently use magnetic field lines to represent magnetic uh, fields pictorially, pictorially and you can use a compass needle to uh, trace out these magnetic field lines as we will soon see in the next slide. The magnetic field is always tangent to these field lines. The, they basically show, the magnetic field lines basically show the magnetic force exerted on a test charge, on a test uh, north pole basically. And uh, the density of these field lines uh, uh, represent the strength of the magnetic field. So if there are more of these field lines uh, within a certain area, then the magnetic field is stronger there. Now uh, let us look at this picture where we have shown a bar magnet and uh, we bring a compass needle close to it. Uh, we move the compass needle around the bar magnet and the direction, the, the north direction of the compass needle points out the direction of the uh, magnetic field and uh, it also traces out the magnetic field lines as you can see. In this case so the magnetic field lines they emerge from the north pole of a magnet and uh, and terminates on the south pole you can also do the same experiment with iron fillings for example if you spread iron fillings in the vicinity of a ma magnet 
and let them settle down, uh, the pattern they will trace out will indicate the magnetic field lines also. And again, the direction of these magnetic field lines is from the North Pole to the South Pole. So here we uh, place two magnets with uh, opposite poles close to each other. You can see the iron filings uh, tracing out the direction of the magnetic fields. And what you see here is between the North and South Poles, the lines are very dense, the magnetic field lines are very dense. Whereas as you go away from the poles, then the uh, magnetic field uh, becomes weaker and the lines also are less dense. So uh, if you remember the, the number of field lines or the density of field lines in a certain region uh, indicates the strength of the magnetic field. So if two opposite poles are close to, together, uh, there is a strong attractive force between, the, between these poles. In this picture, we show two like poles close to each other and you can see there are almost no field lines in between the in, the, in between these two poles the density is very less so the field is, uh, so the uh, magnets are repelling each other the poles are repelling each other in this case the si unit of the magnetic field is the is called the tesla and tesla is defined as weber per meter square weber represents the magnetic flux density and uh, tesla can also be written in terms of other uh, other units such as Newton per coulomb times meter per second or Newton divided by ampere times meter. And the CGS unit of, of, uh, of the magnetic field is, uh, is called Gauss represented by a capital G and uh, one Tesla is equal to, the, equal to 10 to the power 4 Gauss. Over here this table shows how to compare uh, different magnetic field distance just to give you an idea what's a strong magnet versus what is a weak magnet. Some of the strongest uh, magnets are superconducting magnets used in physics experiments. And uh, in this case, it, uh, uh, thus, uh, we have shown like this uh, superconducting magnet gives about 30 Tesla of, uh, of, of a magnetic field. These days, there are even powerful superconducting magnets, lab magnets. And the Conventional lab magnets that we use in physics experiments generate about 2 tesla of magnetic field. So if you look at an MRI machine, it's also in uh, about 2 tesla, the magnetic field it generates. Bar magnets generates about 0 0.01 tesla uh, magnetic fields. Surface of the sun also has, a, has, the, has, a, has the same type of magnetic fields, 0 0.01 tesla. And the magnetic fields uh, at the surface of Earth is even weaker. Uh, two orders of magnitu magnitude less than the, that of the sun. And inside human brain, there are electrical pulses uh, going on. There's a, s a very small magnetic field, uh, about 10 to the power minus 13 Tesla. When we study magnet magnetic fields, frequently we have to deal with directions, and uh, we have to deal with directions in 3D, basically. So uh, there are some conventions used. So frequently we have fields uh, that are described to be out of the book, out of the page or out of the screen or into the screen uh, uh, to point in the third direction, third dimension. And so when uh, the B field is going out of the page, then we represent it as a dot. And when the B field is into the page of the book, then we uh, represent it as a cross. And uh, this is represented by the arrow. So when the B field is out of the page, then we are looking at the, at the head of the arrow and when the uh, B field is into the page, we are looking at the tail of the arrow. And th this is the convention used for, uh, used in terms of dots and crosses to describe B field directions.